I am super excited for this interview with Mariah Riona. She is an award-winning graphic designer and brand strategist who owns a full-service branding and marketing studio for creative female entrepreneurs. Mariah's passion is helping other women succeed in business by giving them the tools they need to show up confidently, attract the right clients, get paid what they're worth, and build brands and lives that they love. Hope you enjoy it. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. Each week, you'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. So it is such a pleasure for me to get to talk to other business women that are outside of the professional organizing industry. And so today, Mariah, being a graphic designer and a brand strategist and a social media teacher and instructor and helper of all things, Mariah, I am so happy to have you here today. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. You have so much going on that you offer for your clients and you put them under kind of a a category of creative entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So I know that professional organizers, even though that's not something you necessarily specialize in, and we'll get to that in a second, if you ever even really heard of what we do. (laughs) Um, But professional organizers, I think often don't think of themselves as necessarily creatives. Mm -hmm. However, I know, and, um, and I think there's a a growing group of organizers that will agree with me. I mean, what we do is extremely creative. It just doesn't always come out in the most glamorous way, (laughs) like on social media or on our websites, because a lot of the work we do is kind of dirty, you know, and it's it's not always in great lighting. Um, so I think, I think just talk chatting with you today will help, um, kind of re-inspire some of the organizers out there who are thinking about their brand, Mm -hmm. thinking about how they want to represent themselves online um, and just, you know, breathe some new inspiration into what they're doing. So will you please tell us uh, all about Mariah Riona Branding? Yes. um, So I am the creative director and owner of Mariah Riona Branding, which is a full service branding studio for, I say creative female entrepreneurs, but it, like you said, it's, um, it's usually solopreneur women who are service providers and they've got, you know, a system or a product or something that they have created on their own and they want to put out in the world. And so I kind of help them bring that to fruition and make it beautiful so that they can share it confidently. And so my services are, like you said, they're vast just because I've, I've done it for a few years and so I I want to kind of like help them through the whole process so it's not piecemeal so that their brand looks very cohesive. So my background is actually in wedding photography and I did that for 10 years and so that's how I got into this and um, I do brand photography as well as brand design, brand strategy, you know, like where are we going and then that kind of leads into the marketing and social media too. Gosh, that is so awesome. Um, so currently when you are working one-on-one with clients, are you doing web design, logo design? Like tell us a little bit of everything of what you can do and have done. Yeah. So, um, I have a system that I walk them through so that it, you know, in the end it, it's very, like I said, very cohesive and it goes in the right direction. So like, I would never like start with a website when somebody's like, Hey, I need a new website. I'm like, Hey, but let's look at your logo and branding first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so typically somebody will come to me, um, wanting the logo and branding. And so I walk them through that process. And usually before we start that, we'll even do like brand strategy, like who is your ideal client and what is the why behind your business and what are your brand values? Because when I know that as your brand strategist and designer, I know then I have a better idea of what your logo should look like. You know, Mm. if I know your ideal client, then I know the aesthetic of that logo and brand as opposed to just making something pretty because it's trendy right now. Hmm. Really good point. (laughs) So, okay. I've got lots of curiosity (laughs) types of questions. When someone comes to you 
and no shame in the game, right? Usually, as, you know, to get a business launch, most people have done some type of DIY mm -hmm. um, website or logo just to get things started and nothing wrong with that, right? Mm -hmm. But when people come to you, what are the things that they are commonly saying? Like, why? Like, why do they want to do a whole, you know, branding mm -hmm. redirection, new logo? Like, what, what is driving that for them? So yeah, that's a great question. Usually um, there is a lot of DIY involved and I actually prefer working with clients who have been in business a while and maybe they've DIY or they've done something on the cheap just to get started. And, um, you know, we all have to start out. And so I think that's a great way to start your business. Um, but then the clients that come to me, they, they've usually been in it for a few years. And what happens is they're getting really busy but they're wondering why they're not attracting the right clients. And so I kind of take them from this like frantic busyness and undercharging and, you know, it, it kind of goes in line with the sloppy branding and sloppy logo. And we, mm. we work together and we elevate that brand from the foundation, you know, like I said, the ideal client and the why, and then they have, we work together on the branding and the website and then even the social media and marketing so that all of a sudden, um, it, it is more luxury. It's more high end. And so you don't have to tell your clients anymore, Hey, I'm worth this. Pay me this much. You know, they land on your website and they're like, Oh yeah, she's worth it. Mm. <laughs> so it's a lot of, a lot of people come to me because they're frustrated with the clientele that they're getting. And they're asking me, how do I, how do I get those better clients who know what I'm worth? And, I'm, and I tell them, Hey, we've got to, we've got to show them what you're worth. Mm. Okay. Good point. So when, one of the things that you mentioned was that you really almost insist on starting with the person and understanding their why for their business. Uh -huh. Like, can you tell us what is the importance of that? Yeah. Um, the why is everything. It's just like the cornerstone of your whole brand because you know, when you go out in the world and you, you put your business on the internet and all of that, like I said, my background is in photography and I work with a lot of photographers and we all complain that it's a saturated market. You know, everybody with a camera is a photographer now. How do you differentiate yourself? And your why, no matter what industry you're in, your why is how you differentiate yourself. Because as an organizer, you know, you could be in a town with 10 other really well-known organizers. And if somebody's just looking up for an organizer on Google or whatever, they're going to come across those different sites. But if they land on your website and you're speaking about the why behind your brand, why you got into this, what it means to you and what, how you want to serve that client, the right client is going to be attracted to that. And the other, um, the competition just is going to fall to the wayside. Okay. So I think that, um, this is a really interesting thing to consider because professional organizing as an industry, like as a whole, um, is still very much like the baby sister of interior designers, um, personal okay. assistants, like those are more well-known and more well-understood. Um, so, and, and even like in, uh, I have students internationally who are literally like the first professional organizer in their oh, entire wow. country. Like it's an amazing industry because of the opportunity that is growing. Um, because again, you know, for better, or for worse, it's not super well known. So you can be kind of the first one out there with a new concept, but also you have to do a lot of educating, you know, your local right. market. If you live somewhere where it's not, um, already sort of an established thing. So we have, I think a lot to learn by looking forward, um, at industries, like you said, wedding photographers, mm -hmm. there's a lot of wedding photographers mm -hmm. like that is, you know, a, a generally established business everywhere where you would possibly want to have a wedding <laughs> and maybe even in some places you don't. Um, so, um, so even though professional organizers aren't like considered maybe overall saturated, there are certain pockets of areas where I have um, been coaching um, organizers who have been in business for a while and are like, whoa, it seems like overnight the mm. industry changed, new organizers started popping up everywhere. Now these are in some of like the larger metropolitan areas. Uh, I mean, I'll call them out. LA mm. is a big one where people are like, oh God, there's so many now. Yeah. Um, certain of the big cities in Texas, organizing is huge in Texas because everything is big in Texas. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really well understood there. So 
when, so when you are working with a photographer who is specifically coming to you and saying, Hey, I really want to take things to the next level. And my local market is saturated. Like there is no question about it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that we can be thinking about like long-term that are helpful to hear from an industry like photography that will help us continue to be thinking about how we stand out as the, the industry as a whole grows, as other competition pops up around us? Like, what can you say to speak to that? Tom? Yeah, for sure. So I think we all get started in business and no matter what that business is, you know, I think there's somebody out there that like sparks that interest who might be the competition. Um, mm -hmm. And we see these people and think, oh, she's made it. I need to copy what she's done because then I'll have made it too. Yeah. And my approach to branding is we're not going to copy anything. We're going to set you up as this totally unique brand that sets you apart from your competition. Um, so I see a lot of, you know, copycat stuff. And when, in my early days of brand design, people would come to me and say, Hey, so-and-so has this logo. I want a logo just like that. And I don't, mm -hmm. I don't work with people like that because, you know, you don't want to blend in with everybody. You want to stand out. And so getting as basic as knowing your brand foundation, you know, if you have, let's say you're in a city and there's just two professional organizers, but she is your direct competition and everybody seems to be going with her, you know, you don't want to copy what she's doing because then you'll right. just get the cheaper versions of her clients. Um, oh, good point. Yeah. That, that is worth <laughs> writing down people. That was a really good one. So what you want to do is say, you know, she's awesome. And maybe she can even be, you know, your, your mastermind partner or your community in, in, in your city. But how can you take what you want to do and, and go in a totally different direction and make it uniquely you so that you start attracting the right clients for you, the right high end clients for your business. And that's what having a really substantial, really well thought out brand can do for you. So when you're at that point, let's, let's circle back to what you said. So usually when people come to you, they're super busy, but mm -hmm. they also are not quite satisfied with who they are busy serving. Right. So that's an awkward stage to be in mm -hmm. a business, right? And I think a lot of people get stuck there because they mm. don't know. I think we all have to get there. Um, but that's like one of those big stepping stones. You have to move past it. Um, yeah. And I think there are some people that just never move past it because they don't, they're so caught up in the frantic hustle and they don't know how to move past it. And the way to move past it, my approach to that is, you know, you, you pay your dues, you, you do the, the crazy hustle for a while and you get a lot of experience under your belt, but then you invest that money that you've made into a more high end brand. And then what happens is you work less, but you charge a lot more because you're able to. And so, you know, maybe you have a third, the many, as many, um, clients the next year, but you're charging three times as much, which is just amazing because then you can take vacations and stuff. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. Um, so do you agree that that is the right time to, even though it feels like you can't take a break to slow down and rethink how you're putting yourself out there, that that is kind of necessary at that point in order to avoid kind of burning yourself out? Yeah, because I just feel like as a solopreneur, burnout is inevitable. And for most of my clients, and I would imagine most of your listeners, you know, we're not just business owners, we're mothers and wives and we have lives. Hopefully yeah. we have friends outside of work. Yes. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you could be working 80, 90 hours a week and be making good money, but like at what cost, you know? And so oh, yeah. I just really think to me, that's where I see a lot of people coming to me because they are just, they're in pre burnout or burnout mode. I get a lot of inquiries that are just like, help me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they're fine. They're just, they're burnt out. <laughs> yeah. And well, and the thing with organizing is you couldn't work 80 hours, even if people were willing to pay you because it is a very physical job. Like it is, um, it is emotionally intensive and physically intensive. So at some point you have to figure out who those right people are that you will be able to serve sustainably. Mm -hmm. 
So Mariah, do you think there are ever any, and now I know you said there are certain clients that are just not a good fit for you. Do you think that there are wrong reasons to come in and say, I want to redo everything. I want to redo a whole new brand, whole new website. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if you're not doing it for the right reason, and to me, the right reason is to really create something authentic and that will withstand the test of time. That's what your brand and your mm. logo should do for you. Um, then it's not the right reason. If it's like, hey, you know, if you already have a well-established brand um, and you just want to throw it out and go with something pretty and trendy for this season, that's really the worst thing you could do because building a brand is truly building trust with your audience. Um, it's mm -hmm. this visual, um, and it's not just visual, you know, it's the way you communicate, it's your brand messaging and all of that, but it's this consistency across the board and you become recognizable. It's called brand recognition, which then makes you trustworthy to your audience. And as, um, entrepreneurs now, most of us, I would imagine for, for your audience as well, a lot of our clients find this online. And, um, there's this idea, I call it the stranger on the internet. You to your, your audience are a stranger on the internet. They don't know why they should invest money in you or part with their hard earned dollars. And so your brand can like ease a lot of that if it's done well and it's consistent, even though maybe they've never met you when they see it over and over again, this consistency reiterated, you become familiar and comfortable to them, almost like a friend, then they're when willing to spend money on you. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I teach in my course for professional organizers, like in, whether they are just starting out and want to figure out how do I build trust that trust factor, which is the number one thing, because if somebody's going to be paying you to come into their house, it can't just be anybody, you know, right. like to come like touch their personal right. things. So how do you build that trust quickly? How do you convey that luxury high end feel with your website? Um, I teach people how to DIY this as best as possible from the beginning so that hopefully they aren't getting to that point where they're stressed out and overwhelmed mm -hmm. making money, but with like the wrong kinds of people that are making them say, I never should have started this business. Like I help people avoid that with inspired organizer. Awesome. Okay. So Mariah, let's switch to a new topic. Now you have had lots of experience essentially coaching and helping train and educate your clients on how to build this cohesive brand without all of the stress and overwhelm in their life. What are your thoughts on the role that social media has played in, you know, women, I mean, creative entrepreneurs everywhere feeling very overwhelmed by all the things that they should mm -hmm. be doing for their business online. Right. Yeah. I, I see this so much where, well, and I even dealt with this myself. I took like a really long social media break. I kept all of my accounts active and I was interacting with them via um, my desktop computer, but like I took Instagram off my phone, Facebook off my phone for six months because I just felt so overwhelmed. And it gets to this point where you just feel like you can't do enough. You, you put in all this effort and you are not seeing the reward of doing social media. And I see so many people spending so much time on social media that their business is kind of fall to the wayside. They spend so much time promoting the business and um, doing the social media game that they're not actually running their business anymore. Uh, I, I completely agree. Like there is something that makes people feel like they're being productive if they're scrolling on mm -hmm. Instagram and like commenting on other people's feeds. And there is something to be said for being engaging and everything, mm -hmm. but it is not a substitute for like actually doing what? Like actually following up with, you know, your yeah. leads or getting on the phone. I mean, I think it is so easy to turn to something like uh, Instagram or any of the social media platforms you know, even browsing through LinkedIn can be way easier than doing some of the challenging um, things like returning phone calls. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, sound, sounds crazy, but I know it is happening every single day. Yeah, no, it's so true. Um, I like to call it buffering. <laughs> oh, it is. You're not, yes. you know, you can, you can say you're working, but um, because it's associated with your work, but you're not actually getting the work done. Because like you said, you're avoiding the scary stuff 
mm-hmm. by quote unquote working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Now, not to, not to, um, uh, disparage the fact that, uh, lots of organizers do get clients through Instagram. So let's jump to what is working well and what, how do you help people focus on things that actually get them business through social media? Yeah. So, um, I, I think social media is so incredibly important and I think you do need to have that presence on there to build that trust factor. Like I talked about. Um, so what's happened to me is, um, I would work with clients on their branding and then more and more they started, started hiring me for the whole experience. Like, so from foundational work all the way through the logo and the website and the brand photos. And then we get to the end of it and they kind of looked at me like, well, what do I, what do I do with it now? (laughs) They yeah. <laughs> didn't know how to implement the social media aspect of it. Um, and so I ended up taking that over for some of my clients and actually managing their social media for them. And it was funny because at the time, my social media was just kind of a mess. I was very haphazard with it. But when I was doing it as a job for a client, I got very systematized and very organized with it. And I created the system to like, knock out really effective social media without it taking up all my time because it's, I have multiple clients that I do this for. So it does not take all of my time. So I actually turned it into this system that, you know, you can do in a day or in a few days and have it all set up and ready to go and have it scheduled where it kind of runs on almost auto for you. So you can get back to work and do this stuff, do your actual work while social media is running in the background for you. That sounds amazing. And you know, every professional organizer out there loves a good system. And (laughs) in fact, in fact, some of us don't want to admit that we would rather use other people's systems than try to create our own, because sometimes you're just too close to your own stuff, like your own Instagram. And it is so difficult, even though we know in our heads, yes, you create some rules, you batch it, you get on Mm -hmm. you get off. Like, and I I've said this before in past podcasts, I treat all social media, especially on my phone. Like you said, like I am running into a burning building, getting what I need and then getting out (laughs) like, like a bomb is about to go off (laughs) because I know that the second that I start relaxing and being distracted and start scrolling around that I have just had my most precious resource sucked out of me, Mm -hmm. which is my time. And, and some of that stuff, it feels good, like commenting on your friend's posts and cheering her on. And all of that is great, but it does not substitute. Like you can't sit back at the end of the day and said, Oh, I, I did the things that I needed to do to grow my business. Right. I mean, you just have to take a hard look at that. So what is your biggest tip? Like if, if they don't take anything else away from this, how, like, what is your like Jedi mind trick for how to like really, um, how to treat your own social media? Like it is a client's where you're detached from it. Like you just, you do the work, you do the work involved and then you get off and you don't get sucked into the scroll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My biggest thing is having, like I said, a system in place and then actually like, I kind of track my hours um, because I do that for client work. And so, you know, when you know you only have so much time, um, you're kind of in and out and you do what needs to be done and then you get out of there as opposed to like getting on there, like you said, and then you scroll and it's three hours later and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't get actual client proposals out or yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So treat it, treat your own social media like a job. Um, because it is, Mm -hmm. it's fun. And so there is that trap. And so, you know, I've spent so much time on social media and then been like, yeah, that's time. But like, I didn't actually accomplish anything. And so when you have this system and you have tasks that, you know, you need to check off of a list, um, you're actually working on your social media and then you can turn it off and get back to your other work. I totally agree. Um, you also mentioned, you said the word fun, like, yeah, that is fun. It's, it is fun and it's neat. Um, and it's very inspiring to see what other people are doing out there, like the people that you follow, but that's also, that's the time frame when all of the dark side of the social media happens too. And that is comparing yourself to everybody else and losing steam and losing momentum on your own goals and the things that you want to accomplish because you look at so-and-so who's like mm-hmm. a couple of years ahead of you, or you look 
look at anybody else out there and then you start to say things to yourself. You start to have those thoughts that are running the show. Like, I don't know why I even try. I don't know why anybody would come to me when they could just go to so-and-so mm -hmm. like, maybe I should just stop or maybe I should just slow down or whatever the case may be. Like, I think if nothing else, one of the reasons to decrease the time on social media is that you will decrease your time spent in that comparison mm -hmm. trap. Yeah, no, I think it's so true because that was a big part of the reason for the break that I took. Um, and it's kind of that like shiny object syndrome where yeah. you get on there and you see your competitor or somebody that you admire and they're doing a certain strategy. Um, you know, maybe they have a launch coming up or something. Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing all of these beautifully branded pieces coming out and they're announcing new things and you think, Hey, I, I'm not doing that. I'm behind. But yes. in fact, if you, have your own strategy and your own social media strategy and your own social media system in place, you can just look at hers and be like, oh, good for her. But you're like head down working on your stuff because you know what you have to accomplish. And so you know that you don't need to go try to do what she's doing, try to dissect it and do it for yourself. Like you have your own strategy that you are working towards. Mm hmm Okay. I really, really, really love that. I love thinking that when people come to you, they are not just getting like a brand reset or a brand refresh. Like they're truly like getting their mindset worked on too. Like maybe it's even just the act of investing with someone else to really come up with this beautiful brand um, and website that you're not then going to like, I mean, you know, are you going to spend thousands of dollars, uh, you know, with someone to do something professional and then go home and like still tinker with it yourself uh, all the time? Like, no, you trusted a professional to do it. And then also the same thing, they're getting a, uh, like a true, like mindset, uh, focus with you where it's like, this is your, this is your business. This is mm -hmm. your lane. Like you're really right. defining, like, here's what it is that I do. And I don't need to compare myself and try to do everything that everybody right. else is doing. Right. Yeah. You can kind of put the blinders on and yeah. say, Hey, you know, good for them. Good for them. But I've got a plan. I've got a strategy. This is my path. And I know if I stick to this path, I'm, I'm going to see results. I love that. When someone comes to you and they do have a big idea, but they're, they're, they do have some of that comparison, like, I really want to do this thing, but it's kind of already being done out there. So I'm not really sure. Like, how do you work with somebody in order to really hone in on their vision so that their, their way of saying it or teaching it or doing it can really come to life? Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's really no original ideas, right? Like we all borrow right. <laughs> from other people. Nobody like comes to me and is like, I want to do this thing. Nobody's ever thought of it before. Um, yeah. But that's kind of where your why comes into it because even though you're inspired by somebody else, it's like, okay, well, why do you want to do this? Um, what is your background that has led you to this? What is your vision for what this looks like? And then we can take you in a totally different direction than mm -hmm. your competitor who then is no longer your competitor because you guys are just so far apart. That's so true. How much emphasis do you place on the writing that is on your website and in your social media and in your emails? Like how much does that matter? Yeah, it really matters. Um, it is all about having a consistent brand and I, I do walk some of my clients through that with their brand strategy. Um, and like you said, hire a professional when you want it done the right way. I actually yes. hired a professional copywriter to write my website. Um, and then from there, you know, I already had an idea of like my own brand voice, my tone, even things like my little catchphrases or things I say regularly. If you go to my mm -hmm. website, you'll notice it's like, Hey girl, girl, cause that's the way yeah. I talk to my friends. <laughs> um, but like, you know, if, if you copied that and that's inauthentic to you, it's never going to feel right to you. It's never going to sound right. It's never going to land right. Um, so when you can really pull out what your brand messaging is, um, which is, you know, kind of the why behind it and um, what you're doing. And then also the tone of it, which is unique to you as well. Um, then you really set yourself apart um, messaging wise, as opposed to what I mostly do, which is the visuals. But when it's all, when it's all working together, it's really kind of magic. <laughs> 
That is awesome. And, and you're right. It is, it is, uh, work. it has to work together. You can't have beautiful visuals and then <laughs> horrible writing. Right. I, I mean, I'm, I'm always telling organizers, it's like, well, you know, we have extra pressure placed on us because if you're going to call yourself a professional organizer, it's like, you need to have your stuff really sorted out. Like mm -hmm. on your website, the, the links need to work. You know, the writing needs to mm -hmm. be very good. You know, again, where it's not like we're aiming for this, um, unattainable perfection, but people are judging your website in itself. It's like as an indicator of how organized you really are, or potentially, you know, if you're putting something out there sloppy, mm -hmm. it's like, well, that really doesn't jive with like what you're saying you can do for my life. Right. Yeah. And I would say like, even more than that, um, like not just for professional organizers, but like for your business, you know, if you're putting stuff out that is sloppy, you're devaluing your work that you do because, um, you know, somebody's not going to pay good money. Like if you're trying to build this luxury brand and charge more, people aren't going to part with their hard earned dollars. Like I like to say, um, if it's sloppy, they're going to notice that inattention to detail and assume that the rest of your work is going to be that way. No, that's totally, totally true. Okay. So Mariah in my student group, um, women who are in inspired organizer, they have gotten, uh, from me the whole like behind the scenes, here's how you brand market, sell your business. Um, here's how you manage the multiple client projects. See, it's all the business business stuff. Um, and what they really love about that is because I've already done a lot of the thinking about here's how you appeal to luxury clients. So you can charge those high prices because it does all work together. I mean, really everything you and I uh, believe in really goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. However, I know that the day to day of figuring out how to do like the ongoing marketing tasks, like I teach them, here's how, here's some, um, ideas for, uh, things you could be putting on Instagram. Like I help them figure out the right marketing strategies for them because I don't just say, here's one thing that everybody should be doing. So some of them have determined that social media is something that they do want to invest their time and energy into, but it is a struggle. Like we mentioned earlier to come up with that, with that system. And can you tell us more, like what is your, how will your course run and what will that do for someone like an organizer? Who's like, I kind of sort of know what I want to do. I just really need help figuring out the plan so I can stay consistent with it. Yeah. So I decided to create a social media course because like I said, I was, um, doing this for my clients and it was all, when it became client work, it was all very systematized. Like I'm doing this many Instagram posts a month and this many Facebook posts. And I just realized how well that worked. And so then I took that system and put it into my own business and then it worked really well there. Um, and so I, I do this for clients, but I realize not everybody wants or can afford to have somebody run their social media full time. Right, and yeah. so I just, I really love the system that I've developed. And so I've decided to turn it into a course, um, and walk you through. And it's not like, it's not a copy paste my system. It's how to develop your own system. And we walk through different systems you can create, but really you would come out at the end and have your very own system that works for your business so that you have this really great social media presence that is consistent and constant. Because what I see happen a lot is we get really gung ho about social media and it's like maybe awesome for a month, but you just can't keep that um, energy going without the right system and tools in place to, I, I kind of teach you how to set it up and then make it work on repeat. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's kind of like how to be your own social media manager. Right. <laughs> you and know? like, how do you do that? taking like a day out of your month, as opposed to like every morning you're like frantic, like, Oh my God, what do I post now? <laughs> that is so, yeah, that is so good. And I know that is so needed for a lot of women out there who are in that place where they can't really hire it out, mm -hmm. but they know they need help. <laughs> they know they need help um, to stay consistent with it. So if you don't mind me asking mm -hmm. about the behind the scenes of your business, mm -hmm. because I, I know that you have been learning all these business lessons along the way, as you've been teaching other people in your own business. Now, do you, um, do you have a team? Do you outsource? Do you do things on your own and keep it really lean? Like what is your personal way of managing all the things? Yeah. So I still do 
a lot of everything <laughs> because I like to. Um, and I, I'm building my team, but um, I have some freelancers that work with me. And like I said, you know, um, writing, I love to write and I have gotten my brand voice down, but I don't want to write for my clients. And so I've right. got a copywriter that is working on all my client writing. Um, and then I've got a photographer that works with me, assists with me sometimes. So yeah, constantly working on building that team though. Yeah. And do you have any tips for just like when you're learning how to um, let go of the reins a little bit and create like systems and processes in your own business, like what are, what are some of the, the light bulb moments that you've had along the way with that? Yeah, that's such a great question because it really, it's so hard. And I would imagine a lot of your audience being professional organizers, I would imagine you're kind of perfectionist like I am. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and so like you have a way of doing things and it's the right yeah. way and it's really yeah. hard to let somebody else in. Um, it takes a lot of trust and a lot of vetting, um, I've realized. But also just before I got super busy, um, you know, when I had downtime early in my business, I made it a goal of mine to create different systems. Like I have my client onboarding so system. I have my client offboarding system. Um, I have, you know, my social media system, my content marketing system. I have all of these systems in place so that when people come and help me, we know exactly how it's supposed to go. As opposed to like, you know, you're just like head down doing everything. Um, mm -hmm. And then you're not able to really articulate how you do what. And it's really mm -hmm. hard to hand stuff off to other people when that's the case. Yeah, that is so true. And that's such a good tip. Um, because even, even with organizers who are very established in their business, we tend to have busier seasons and mm -hmm. less busy seasons. And that is the perfect mm -hmm. way to be spending time in your business in the less busy season versus laying on the couch and playing games on your phone and going, well, mm -hmm. hopefully somebody will call me today. I mean, like you could actually still, you should actually still treat it like a business that set aside the time that you would have had a client session today. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a client session today, you can be working on building processes so that when the busy season comes back, that you are so much more ready to handle all of that mm -hmm. with grace and ease and all of the things that we're trying to embody as organizers right. for our clients. And that is a message worth repeating, even for the organizers out there, because there's a lot of you I know who have that sort of like systems shame of I am an organizer. So I should have, I should be naturally great at creating, uh, you know, systems behind the, behind my own business mm -hmm. or able to just like jump right in and figure out all these new tech tools. I mean, this stuff is a learning curve and it does mm -hmm. take some really intentional time to figure that out. Yeah. Um, I really love what you said about scheduling, scheduling out your own business time. I actually do that in my business. Um, I time block everything. And so what was happening was I was time blocking and blocking out my client work. And then I just had what you might call like free time. And like, I was trying to get my own office tasks done in that time, but it wasn't, I wasn't respecting it because it wasn't on the calendar, like my business. Mm -hmm. So what I've done in the last couple of years is I've actually treated my business like a client and my business gets an allotment of time. And so when I'm doing these systems and working on different things in my business, even if I'm creating new, um, you know, if I'm creating something for my business, like a new product or something that's not necessarily working one-on-one -on -one with a client, um, that is something that is a project for my business. So I block it out and I respect my business's time now as much as I respect uh, my client's time. Um, that almost like brings tears to my eyes. The way that you said that, like treating your business like a client is really, that's the real world version of paying yourself first, like mm -hmm. putting, putting your business and ultimately your profit first. Mm -hmm. Um, so that you, this isn't just an expensive hobby right. where you put everybody else ahead of you and then your business and your bottom line suffers as a result. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of organizers are guilty of this because they'll say they're going to set aside time to work on their business. But then if somebody calls and wants to have a consultation or a last minute reschedule, they're just like, Oh sure. You know, whatever. Right whatever. It's flexible. Um, and I know that's, it's challenging, especially mm -hmm. when you're getting started, but it sounds like Mariah, you have really grown in your, um, 
uh, maturity of like that mindset of yeah. like, this is not negotiable. Right. No, I, yeah, there are things in my business that are, well, it, when it's on the calendar, it's not negotiable, mm -hmm. um, short of an emergency. Um, because it's a commitment that I've made to myself, just like a commitment to the client. And so, but it's so easy when you block it out on your calendar, you can say, well, you know, I, you don't want to be totally available to clients either. That's not a True. great thing. Yeah. <laughs> if you're like, oh, let's meet. I've got all week open. That doesn't make you sound very Doesn't good. sound good, no. <laughs> so, you know, if you have made a commitment to yourself and it's on the calendar, tell them, hey, you know, I've got this time and this time available. Don't, right. don't just throw your own personal business time out the door because the client comes your, your way. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That's such a good tip. Let me ask you this too, because I know we've got a lot of women um, listening who they are working full-time in their organizing business or they're working part-time, but then the other part of the time they're, um, you know, they're moms or they have another part-time job like that, but a lot of them are working from home in some capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so most like 99.9% .9 of us do not have the luxury of having a whole separate office to go to that is just for our organizing business. So how do you personally mm -hmm. set those boundaries at home where like, I know you have a family, mm -hmm. I know you're a mom, um, like how do you like tell them like, okay, this is work time and then this is play time, you know, more or less. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny you ask that because before I, ha I have a two year old and before I had him, um, I was working in my business full time, but that was like seven days a week. And I would mm -hmm. just, you know, kind of come and go in my business whenever I wanted to, because I could. And I actually, I was so afraid of having a baby because I was afraid of what it would do to my business. And I actually have just grown exponentially, like profit wise, client wise, all the things mm -hmm. since having like my it. kid, because wow. I had to go, I had to get so stringent about my schedule and all of a sudden, you know, that hour that I might've wasted scrolling on Instagram, that hour became very valuable. And so having a kid was actually the best thing for my business. <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of the things that I do now, um, I have work days and I have non-work days and those aren't really negotiable. Every Wednesday I'm out of the office. That's my day with my kid and I'm off the phone. Um, you know, sometimes I'll pop on email while he's napping, but that's my day with him and weekends too. And I don't answer emails um, after 5 p.m. You can wait till the next day. Um, I've just, mm -hmm. when you start your business, I you're just so excited and that's awesome. Um, and so you dive right in, but you lose a lot of those personal boundaries. And I've had um, a business of my own you know, wedding photography that then became branding for the last 10 years. And so now I love what I do, but it's not fun. It's, it's work. And so I, you know, I, when I'm working, I'm working. And when I'm not, I'm with my family and I try to be fully present, which is a big part of the social media thing too. That's why I try to really systematize it and have social media hours built into my schedule. So I'm not on my phone which is between me and my kid. You know, I, I feel so guilty. Sometimes it still happens. And, and I look, he's even started saying to me, mama phone yeah. <laughs> and it like breaks my heart. And so I'm trying to like leave the phone in the other room. Um, yeah. you know, and another thing I do is I have an office in my house, um, at the end of the day and on the weekend, the door is closed. And to me mentally, that's like work's done you're not going in there. And good. I'm really yeah. good about not, cause I used to, I used to just, you know, I, when I first started, I was in an apartment with roommates and stuff. And so I was on my bed working on my laptop on my business, you know, but now I've got my office and like the laptop does not go in the bedroom. I never work in my bedroom because then I think when you go in there to sleep, your mind's not restful. Mm hmm. This, these are all like s such good tips that I know I, I can just tell have just been learned by, you know, pure experience. Cause I did the wrong thing for a long time. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's all the same things like you hear over and over again, but it doesn't really settle in until you have really dealt with like, what are those trade-offs mm -hmm. that I'm going to have to make if I don't have boundaries about when and where and how mm -hmm. that I'm working. Um, and, and you just reminded me of something so interesting that, um, a lot of, a lot of professional organizers are side hustling alongside a day job. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, uh, I mean, some of them 
um, who are side hustling, I would say are even more productive and maybe booked out than the, <laughs> than some, I'm not saying as a rule by any means, I'm just saying that because they are very constrained about when they can work mm -hmm. and how they can work, they're very intentional about it. So sometimes like that constraint is a gift. Um, totally I know great. when you, when you have like a lot of unstructured time that feels like what you need, but truly like learning how to, and this is what it sounds like you've mastered setting appointments with yourself and keeping them like essentially really being your own boss and not just being your one bad employee <laughs> that you can't count on. Yeah. That's uh, uh, this is such a good conversation. Yeah. It's funny because um, sometimes you need that pressure to make you productive. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, or maybe it's like, maybe you need to make a certain amount to pay rent you know, you're going to do it because you have to hustle to do it as opposed mm -hmm. to like, you know, if you're just doing it, but you don't need them, you don't necessarily need the money. Um, you can take your time and, you know, just kind of play a little and there's not that yeah. pressure. And I think the pressure is a good thing sometimes. Yeah. Well, like you said earlier, it really connects you with your why. Exactly. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Which is really, it sounds like, like the heart of this conversation is your why is what is driving everything that is going well for you mm -hmm. in your company. Even if it's just you. Mariah, this was so, so beneficial, so helpful. Tell us if, um, if anyone out there is listening, first of all, tell us where they can find you. Second of all, if, if you even have availability for people to work with you and what you are currently offering and, um, and then three, please tell us uh, where they can find out more about that social media course. Cause I know that that's a big pain point for a lot of people. Yeah. So, um, I am on social media. Well, my, my website is mariahriona.com and then my handle on all my social media pro profiles is mariahriona one word all squished together. Um, so yeah, I am taking new clients. Um, you know, I, I have to work to squeeze you in, but, um, I love meeting new women in business. And, um, if that's something, if you're interested in like really building a luxury high end brand, especially, you know, if you're at that point where you may be feeling a little frustrated with your clientele, I'd love to talk to you and, um, see what we can do about building a higher end brand for you. And then the Perfect. social media course, um, uh, it's still in production right now. Um, I'm hoping to launch late fall this year. Um, but you can find out about that when it launches at mariariona.com backslash courses. Awesome. And then you do have a free uh, workbook called the brand blueprint yes. to help ladies out there or well, men too, uh, build an epic brand foundation. So they can find that on your website as well. Yes. Yes. It's, it's all over the website. It's, um, I'm really proud of it. It's 20 pages. Um, even if you don't ever want to work with me, it's just a really great resource to have, um, to kind of take you through those foundational steps of figuring out your why. And, and then, you know, if, um, if you are interested in coaching on that, it's a really great place to start because we can take that workbook and dive even deeper. That sounds perfect. That sounds so great. Well, yes. So ladies out there, we know that having a brand presence is a non-negotiable. So it's not a question of if it is a question of when. So if you're not a DIYer, like please get on Mariah's wait list or find someone else and get on their wait list because we, uh, you know, like Mariah and I said, we want you to reach that place where you are working with clients that energize you, not deplete you. Um, and so much of what people know about you and feel about you comes through, through your branding. Yeah. It's funny because I did that in my own business. Um, when I, when I just went branding, I really honed in on my own foundation, my own why, my own ideal client. And you'll see it in my website. I, I just speak directly to a very certain type of entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, and my why is just to empower other women in business. And because I put that out there, it's a little scary at first, but because I put that out there in the world, I have had the most amazing women connect with me mm. and I just love all of my clients dearly because they are that ideal client and they really feel that why as well. So it just connects you with really amazing people. 
That's so awesome. Thank you so much, Mariah, for coming on to share your brain with us. This is <laughs> fabulous. If you guys have not seen her website yet, please go to mariahriona.com. It's in the show notes, just so you can see and feel everything that she has been talking about this entire time. It's so, so good. And she also has a free Facebook group as well, where you can connect with her about social media and branding, whatnot. All right. Thank you so much, Mariah. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.